the bolt pattern analysis software. If you make parts with holes, this product is for you. The bolt pattern analysis software provides tools to evaluate the process of manufacturing holes. Within seconds, you can determine how well your machine is targeted and how to fix it if adjustments are required. What separates the bolt pattern analysis software from other packages is the ability to group holes into patterns and use multiple parts in an analysis. Ideal tool for CNC machine and transfer line targeting. The bolt pattern analysis software benefits. You can quickly identify root cause of machine problem. For example, tooling, fixturing, or software. Evaluates hole measurements as a pattern or individually. Results are displayed, displayed graphically. It's intuitive and easy to use. Uses statistics to calculate machine corrections. Evaluates a process instead of a single part. Perform best fit simulations to verify adjustments. Will improve the process before machining more parts. It's a huge time saver. Uses measurement data collected from Excel, QC Calc, and the Reaction Plan Manager++ software solution. The intent of this video is to teach the user how to use the software. This is the bolt pattern analysis software. When you start the program, you'll notice at the top, I've got uh, a ribbon control, which organizes your buttons. Uh, it's very similar to Microsoft's Office uh, way of, of allowing you to interact with the buttons. If you move your cursor over a button, you'll get a little helper screen which will appear, which will give you information about what the button does and a little bit of help. In this area, you'll notice I've got two tabs. I've got a graphics tab and a data tab. The graphics tab will display a window which shows you the graphics of representing the data. So here you'll see holes and pins and, and other geometry uh, graphically uh, and then you can interact with them accordingly to do whatever you need to do. The data window, as it implies, will show you the actual numbers. Sometimes you'll see numeric values as in, and graphics in the same window. It just depends upon what you're looking at. This window over here is the Project Explorer. Uh, as you build a project, you will see um, the patterns and the geometry appear here in the Project Explorer. And then what you can do is you can navigate through all your different uh, patterns throughout the project by just simply clicking on the appropriate pattern. Here you'll notice a, a window which will show you the error and the correction. This is the error of the pattern and this is how much you've corrected it. So you'll always get this information. When I click on a pattern and I look at the data, you'll on the fly you'll see the error and the corrections associated with that particular pattern. Now let's open up an existing project so you can see what the data looks like. I'll go to File, Recent Operations. Here you'll notice in the data window and the graphics window it's empty. It's because I haven't chosen anything from the Project Explorer. Remember the Project Explorer has the, all the uh, patterns and the, f and the features associated with the patterns uh, in the Explorer. If I click on an item inside the Project Explorer, you'll notice the graphics updated themselves, uh, updated itself to reflect the, the data for OP30 and face holes. In this example, you'll notice I've got four features. The features represent holes in the pattern. If I look at one particular uh, feature, you'll notice I've got a, two dashed lines here which represent crosshairs. These are the nominal targets for the, for the particular hole. The rings around the target represent the uh, tolerance. The inside ring represents the true position tolerance. The outside ring represents the maximum material condition. Obviously, uh, if, there were no, if, if no max material condition exists, you'd only see one ring. So if I want, I can uh, 
click on the other operation and you'll see that the graphics changed to reflect the other operation. In this case it's the OP40 joint face holes. Now when I'm looking at this, here I've got six holes. You'll notice I've got uh, green, yellow, and red small solid filled dots. Uh, they represent parts. Uh, in this example I've got green, yellow, and red. The green represents parts that are intolerance. Yellow represents you're getting close to being out of tolerance. And red, you are out of tolerance. So in this particular example, I've got parts that have drifted out of spec. Um, you'll also notice, uh, you'll see a little solid square and an, a square that's empty with a line attaching the two. The solid square represents the centroid of all the parts. The open box represents the centroid of the uh, nominal pattern. So visually I can see that I've got a, a shift in X and a shift in Y uh, with respect to where the actual pattern falls in relationship to the nominals. On the left hand side you'll notice I've got the error X.0027, Y.0027 with an angular error of 0.0151. I have no correction. I've performed no uh, fit to this data, so uh, you're seeing the existing process. Okay, so I can bounce back and forth between uh, the uh, between the different bolt patterns. Now, if I select the data tab while I've selected this particular pattern, uh, here it gives you a summary. Uh, looking at all the holes gives you the pattern error, the pattern correction, the maximum true position deviation, the minimum true position capability, or I should say CP, the minimum true position CPK, the maximum diameter deviation, the minimum diameter CP, the minimum diameter CPK. Uh, so at a glance I can tell that hole 6 has the greatest deviation, true position deviation. Hole 6, coincidentally enough, also has the minimum true position CP. Hole 6 also has a minimum true position CPK. Uh, hole 3 has a maximum diameter deviation. Hole 2 has the minimum diameter CP and the uh, minimum diameter CPK. So I've drilled down and I've got a little more information about the holes in the pattern. Now let's look a little closer as to what's included in a, uh, a particular pattern. So if I expand, let, let, let's pick the OP40 joint face holes. If I expand this particular pattern, uh, you'll notice I've got feature info and parts. Now uh, if, if I expand the feature info, you notice I've got joint face hole 1, hole 2, hole 3, 4, etc. As I select each item in the Project Explorer, the item is also selected in the Graphics window. So this works just like Windows Explorer from that regard. You select something in the Explorer and, and the, uh, the pane and to the, the window to the right will, will select or activate that particular feature. If I click on the data window, you'll notice that now I'm looking at hole 1, which is selected. I've got a bunch of dots and uh, you know I've got some red dots, which are showing me that I've got some parts that are out of tolerance. You notice this line here. This line is showing you the last four parts in the stream. Uh, in the table portion of the report, or of the window, You'll notice I've got uh, boxes that are in blue and boxes that are with a white background. When it's when it's, there's a white background, that means you can go in and manually edit that. Uh, the blue means it's locked or it's calculated. So, you know, I can bounce back and forth from hole to hole to drill down and get more information for that particular feature. Okay. Now, 
uh, if I click on parts and I expand the parts selection, these are all the parts that are associated with this pattern. If I click on the individual part, you'll notice that I'm only seeing the data for that particular part. This is useful when you want to get an idea as to what's happening in the process. It should be a, a random variation from part to part to part. Uh, it, it makes it easier. It makes it easy for you to, to see a trend if you have a, a, something that's drifting. Okay. Now, if I click on the data window with a part selected. You'll notice that uh, what I see here is simply the numbers which make up part one. If I click on part two, these are the numbers which make up part two, etc. Uh, here, you know, each, each one of these rows represents uh, a, a s specific feature for that part. If I want, I can click on when, I'm, when the data window is active, I click on the feature info. This will give you a table showing you, uh, basically it's a number dump, I like to call it a number dump, uh, of all of the calculations uh, as well as the, the uh, nominal values. And, uh, so pretty much you can get all the information right from this, from this one window. When I look at this data, it's obvious that my machine has some issues. I really need to retarget the machine. I've got a translational error and a rotational error. My minimum true position CPK is 0.2606. Not very good. Well, with this software, you've got tools that will let you do best fits, a best fit simulation. What is a best fit simulation? Well, a best fit simulation will look at all the parts and it'll figure out mathematically what the translation and rotational error is and it'll adjust that and it'll it'll recalculate the uh, your CP and CPK indices based upon those new you know the translate and rotational values. So if I click on best fit you'll see that my true position CPK significantly improved. Now I get a 1.8688 as opposed to a 0.2606. So as you can see, I can I can do a best fit and send the data home. Best fit, send the data home. I also have some other tools which will let me control how I do the fit. For example, maybe I want to lock down the rotation and only look at the translational fit, the translational corrections. So if I click on this button, lock it down, do a best fit, you'll notice it just translated the data. It did not do a rotation. I still have the rotational error of 0 0.051, 151, and the correction only shows you the translational, uh, translational values because I've, I, you know, I've only did it. I locked down the rotational part of it. So I can, I can do different types of experiments. Maybe I just want to rotate it and lock it about the x and y. Here you can see what happens. You know, if you're using a CNC type machine, you probably aren't going to use this method of uh, controlling the fits. If you're using an older style uh, transfer line or maybe this is a stamping process, you may be limited to how you can control uh, the process, how you can adjust the process. So in those cases, you may want to lock down certain um, certain values so that it can control or or simulate more accurately how you can adjust the machine. Often, the coordinate system used to measure and report the parts does not match the coordinate system needed for the manufacturing process. So trying to decipher the information becomes a challenge because the coordinate systems, the data is just all over the place. So with this software, there are tools available to you to let you manipulate the coordinate system 
of the data to match the process. To do that, I just simply select on the coordinate system tab. And you'll notice here I've got flip axes. I can flip the x axes, y axes. I can rotate them. I can shift my origin. I can actually set an origin on a uh, particular feature. Well, let's switch to the graphics view and experiment with this. So if I flip the axes, you'll see the data. I'll just I'll hit that button a couple of times. You can, you can see what happens to the data. It, it Everything shifts. Everything shifts. Notice my error updates itself to reflect the, you know, the, the new coordinate system. I'll do it in Y. Do it in X. I can rotate my axes. I'll rotate it 10 degrees. I'll rotate it back. I can shift my origin. Uh, by the way, the, there's a blue actual lines, there's two, two lines here, represent our, my, our origin. So if I move it in X by an inch and I move it in Y by an inch, you'll see that I, I simply moved my origin to a new position. I can also select some geometry, select an item, and actually click on a button here to set the origin on that selected item. When I do that I get this question. The item you have selected contains an actual and nominal point. Would you like to set the origin on the actual point? In this case I'm more interested in setting the origin on the nominal target so I'll say no to that question. Okay so if I click on data I'm going to click on that geometry so I'm going to click on data. I'm looking at that one hole. You'll notice that my x and y, or uh, uh, my x and y for this particular hole, is zero for x and zero for y because that's where my origin position is. All my deviations and all my uh, the rest of, of the if data, calculated data that's in this report, or I should say it's in this table, reflects the new origin. So if I bounce from hole to hole to hole to hole, you'll, you'll notice that the numbers uh, have been altered to reflect the new coordinate system. Reference points. What is a reference point? A reference point is a theoretical position expressed in the current coordinate system that's tied back to the part data. So when you do a best fit, the part data will move, the reference points will move with the part data. Now why is that significant? Well, you may have a situation where I've got a stamping process. The stamping process is punching out uh, the whole pattern. To adjust the, stamp, the stamping process, it's typically done with shims. And you can model the shims by utilizing reference points. Then when you do the best fit, the amount the reference points move represents how much you would shim. Another example may be a transfer line where I've got a, a, a machining head that's drilling multiple holes in one shot. Same kind of thing where I've got uh, you know, typically when you adjust those those re those heads, you've got uh, a, a adjustment positions that you move to affect the location of the holes. So, reference points are used to to model these different uh, different types of of uh, machines. All right. So, how do I actually create a reference point? It's really quite simple. Simply go to the Add New. Uh, menu uh, button, menu selection, and then click on the reference point button. When you add a reference point, uh, it'll ask you for the nominal x and nominal y. Here I'm going to make up one uh, reference point of 6 in x and 0 for y. I'm going to add another reference point, this one at minus 6 for x and 0 for y. Now if I go back to my graphics, 
you'll see I've got two uh, two new items on the in the graphics window. Uh, a circle with an X through it. The X represents the nominal. The circle represents the actual. So now when I do a best fit, the circle will move with the with the part data, and then I can go back and evaluate it to see how much it moved to figure out how much to adjust my uh, my machine. So if I go to control, best fit, notice my circles moved, and I've got a line that is drawn from the X to the circle. That uh, amount of movement is the is the uh, amount you would adjust your your shim. You know you would you would adjust at that particular reference point position. So if I click on reference point one, click on data. Here I can see X moved to point five point nine nine seven three and Y moved by minus point zero zero four three. So if I subtract the two, that would be the amount that I would actually uh, apply to my shim position. And here's reference two. If I go back to graphics, go home, you'll see, uh, you'll see how it works. There may be applications where you'd like to manually move the data as opposed to doing a best fit. In those applications, select the Adjust tab to get to the uh, buttons and tools to allow you to manually adjust the data. So in this particular case, I can move the data line linearly. Send it back home or maybe I want to linearly move it and rotate it at the same time. And send it back home. Modify, 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 send it back home. Now, if you make this adjustment, you may want to make this the new home position. If I select this new home button, that sets this current position as the home position. So now if I do a best fit, if I try to go back to the home position, the home position will be here. And notice my error and my correction reflects the new home position. In some applications, you may need to construct some geometry to help you figure out how to adjust your machine. The software gives you some tools that will let you construct circles. I can construct circles using feature averages. I can construct circles using feature points. And I can construct circles using feature nominals. Now, Let's make this more interesting. Let's delete a couple of features and talk about how to adjust this machining process. And this, if I had a milling process, this would be pretty easy. I would simply do a best fit, and the correction values here would be the amounts that I would adjust the machine. My process may not be a, uh, a milling process. Maybe I've got a turning process with live tooling. In that situation, the, the adjustments are a little bit more complex. So maybe I need to figure out where the center line of the chuck is based upon where the parts are actually being machined. So in that situation, I can construct a circle using the feature points. and it'll construct a circle which really represents where the center line of the chuck is. So in this example it's going to construct a circle at x.0027 and y.0027 and the diameter is going to be 8 with a form error of 0.0041. So here you can see it constructed a circle. It appears it's running through the center line 
of each nominal target. It really isn't. Uh, this is not scaled like the actual point, so scaling doesn't apply here. If I click on data, here you'll see this is where the, the, the center line of the circle is, which may represent the center line of your chuck. Notice that the X and the Y position of the circle does not match the error of the pattern. Um, this may be crucial. Uh, it depends upon how you're adjusting your machine. Using the display tab, I can control how and what is displayed. For example, if I check the origin box, the blue axes appear, which indicates the zero position for my X and the Y. If I want to hide the tolerance circles, I check the hide tolerance circles box. I can hide the points and just look at the average for each feature by checking this box here. If I want, I can include reference points if reference points exist in the project. I can include reference point labels. I can include feature names for each each feature in the in the project. If constructed circles exist inside the project, checking this box will display the constructed circle. This is where you set your percent of tolerance criteria uh, when it evaluates to figure out whether the, your parts are, are in or out of tolerance. I'm currently set to 80% of the tolerance. Maybe I want to reduce it to 75%. Scale. Uh, the scale affects your, your, uh, your graphics. Uh, it's a actually the scale is a multiplication factor that's used to 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 make the uh, the effects of the deviations more pronounced. I can change this value, and as you can see, it affects the over overall graphics. If I want, I can change the numeric precision here as well. I'm currently set to four digits to the right of the decimal place. If I want to increase that, I just simply check the, uh, you know, click on the, the number of digits to the right that I want to view. There are three different methods for getting data into the software, or in other words, there are three different methods for building a project. The first method is to manually enter the data into the software. In this situation, I've got a, a re report that has the data, but I have no electronic representation of it. So I can manually enter the data in to build the project. The buttons under the Add New, under Home, Add New, the buttons under this ribbon gives you the tools to manually build a project. A second method is to actually import the data from files. Now you may have a situation where you use Excel to build data files. I can export the data from Excel and bring it into this software to, to, build, to actually build a project. The third method is to use Data Collector. The Data Collector is a very powerful tool you can configure the data collector to go out and look at files. If the files exist, it'll open each one of the files, extract the information that it needs to actually build a project. In this situation, you may, you may be looking at an OP10, an OP20, an OP30, an OP40, and you can configure this so that it looks at all the operations and pulls in the data for all the operations by simply playing the data configurator. It's a very, very powerful tool.
how do I build a project manually? Well, you start out by adding a pattern, a bolt pattern to the project. I'll change the name of the project by going to data, going to the name, and I'll make up a name. For this project. Next thing you do is you add features. I'm going to add four whole features to this project. We'll call this one whole one. And I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say my X is 100, my Y is 100, I have a true position tolerance of 250, a diameter of, I don't know, 5, with a plus and minus tolerance of 1, 0.1. It's an inner diameter. If I go to graphics, you'll see that I just added a whole one. I added, I added a feature called whole one. I'm going to add a second feature. Uh, let's call this whole two. And let's make this one uh, x of minus 100, y of minus 100, with a true position tolerance of 250, a diameter of 5, diameter plus tolerance of 0.1, minus tolerance of 0.1, and it's an inner diameter. Now I've got two whole features. Let's add a third. Let's make this one whole three. Let's make this one at uh, x of 0, y 100 with a true position tolerance of 250, diameter nominal of 5, diameter plus tolerance of 0.1, diameter minus tolerance of 0.1, and it's an inner diameter as well. We'll add one more call this hole 4. We'll make it an x of 0, a y of minus 100, true position tolerance of 250, diameter of 5, plus tolerance of 0.1, minus tolerance of 0.1 for the diameter, and it's an inner diameter. Now you can see I've got four whole features. Let's increase the scaling so I can see it a little bit better. We'll leave the percent of tolerance criteria set to 80 percent. Okay, now we've got the four features. Now it's time to actually add actual information or actual part measurement information. So what I need to do now is add a part. If I click on this button, it'll add a part. Now here you'll notice we've got the x-actual, the y-actual, diameter-actual for holes 1, holes 2, holes 3, and holes 4. Here you just manually enter the data into the project. So let's enter some numbers. Uh, let's keep the numbers simple. So for hole 1, I'll put in 100.1 for x. 100.1 for y, 4.99 for the diameter. Hole 2, let's see, hole 2 is minus 100 and minus 100. Let's, let's make the, this number minus 99.9 for x, minus 99.9 for y, with a diameter of 5.1. <coughs> Hole 3, hole 3 was at 0, the nominal was at 0 and 100, so let's make this 0.1 for x and 100.1 for the y. Let's also make this diameter, we'll make this diameter 4.999. Hole 4, uh, Let's see, that was x0, y of minus 100 for the nominal. So let's make this 0.1 for 
for the x and minus 99.9 .9 for the y. And for the diameter, let's make this, uh, I don't know, 4.98. So if we click on the graphics, we can now see the four holes that we entered, in, entered it in. Now we, I intentionally entered the data so that it would everything would be shifted to the right and up. Here you can see each hole is yellow. Each uh, position is yellow, the, the dot's yellow, indicating that it's beyond the true position zone. But since we've got maximum material condition, it's intolerance, but just barely. So here you saw how we manually enter the data in. Uh, if you want to, now you can go to Control and do your best fits. And that's all there is to manually entering the data. It's actually a fairly straightforward process. Another method for adding data to the project is to use the import tools. You'll notice I've got a button called Bolt Pattern. This button will let me read in a uh, pattern from another project. I could also save data from Excel and bring that data in as well. Now to do something like that, I'm going to add a pattern and simply add features and parts to this pattern. And before we can do that, what I'd like to do is take a look at an example of what a data file looks like. So I'm going to open up this uh, Excel uh, file. And here you notice this is a feature file. This contains nominal feature information. I've got basically a series of columns. Column A contains the feature name. Column B and C is the nominal X and the nominal Y. Column D is the true position tolerance. Column E is the nominal diameter. Column F is the diameter plus tolerance. Column G is diameter minus tolerance. And column H is a flag, which is either true or false. If it's true, it means it's an inside diameter. If it's false, it means it's an OD. Now, this will not, I need to delete this line here, so it's just actual data. And now I'll save this as something else. Uh, now I save this as test CSV, may contain features that are not compatible with CSV comma delineated. Do you want to keep the workbook in this format? Say so yes I do. And I'm going to exit out of this. No, I don't want to save the changes. And now I've got a file out there that I can read in which just contains nominal feature information. So now I can just select the Features button. Identify the file called Test. And here you, you could see that I've read in uh, six holes. I'll change the display to something that's easier to see. And I've just read in the nominal features for pattern one. Now I want to read in the actual data. We'll do the same thing. Here I've got a file out here called sample data. Now this file contains multiple part information and the format of the file is for part one, I've got an X, a Y, and a diameter. This is hole one, part one. Hole two, part one, I've got an X, Y, diameter. Part one, hole three, I've got an X, Y, diameter. You just continue that, that uh, format 
xy diameter, xy diameter, xy diameter for each part. Just put it in sequential order, separate them by commas, and that's the syntax of the data file. It's fairly straightforward. Now just select parts, read in the sample data. Well, I got an error message. Unable to read the data, the process cannot be process file. It's being used by another process. I need to close that Excel spreadsheet. Try that again. There you go. So now you can see I've added the features and I added all the parts uh, by reading in uh, uh, data saved from Excel. The data collector is used to extract data from data files and build a bolt hole pattern project. Use the configure button to access tools to set up the data collector and the play button to execute it. Think of the data collector as a template. The template describes the name of the file, where it expects to see the file, and the contents so it knows where each hole is located at in, with regards to the, the data file. Once that's complete, you simply select the play button to execute the data collector and build the bolt hole pattern project. I'm going to open a solution that has a data collector configured and ready to go. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Recent and click on the BPA example. Now you'll notice the play button is illuminated. That's telling us that there's a data file out there and I'm ready to play the data collector to extract and build the bolt hole pattern uh, project. So I click on the play button. It's asking me how many parts I want to use in the analysis. I'm going to say five. And you'll notice I've got uh, pattern one and pattern two, whole pattern one and whole pattern two. So the data collector worked. It uh, opened up the file, extracted the information it needed to build the uh, bolt hole pattern project. It's important to note that a solution contains a project and a data collector. There are two separate entities that exist inside a solution. If you want, you can go to File, New, and you can erase the uh, project and leave the data collector intact or vice versa. Let's look at the data collector configuration for this solution. When I click on the configure button, a window appears. You'll notice buttons on the left hand side to aid in the configuration. This describes the objects that uh, contain how to read the data from the file and where the whole locations are at. This section here will actually show you the data. This section up here will give you the, the properties for the object. So if I click on data source for example, you'll notice I, I can change the properties for this setting. I think the best way to learn how to configure the data collector is to do it from scratch. So let's clear this and open up a new solution. We need some data to work with. I'm going to use QC Calc Real Time and a data simulator to simulate measuring a part on a CMM. If I click on this button, it will be as if I measured a part on a CMM. QC Calc Real Time is configured to automatically export data to the bolt pattern analysis software. So if I click on inspect, it'll automatically export data to a data file that we could use to generate the data collector. And then of course you'd use the data collector to, to pull that data in. So I'm going to click on the inspect button 
data goes into QC Calc real time, and, and now we have a data file to work with. I'm going to click on the configure button and I'm going to expand this to take over the whole screen. Now the first thing I want to do is tell it where the data file is and read it in. To do that I'm going to click on the data source item here. Click on that. You notice this updates itself. I'm going to choose a, a the type of data, I'm going to choose ProLink Export after version 3.4.82, Becker Quality Solutions, the Bolt Pattern Analysis. I know there's a data file out there that we could use that follows that uh, the, the properties and settings accordingly. So I'll use the Browse button. I'll browse to where that file is located. It's in the repository right here. I'll click on that file, click on open, then I'll click on the import data button to actually read in that data file. Now you'll notice some of the rows are green, some of the rows are, are clear, or are white I should say. The green rows represent header records or header information. The white records represent part data. You notice we had nominal, plus tolerance, minus tolerance, and then, then the data. So you'll use this information to figure out how to configure your, uh, your data collector. The next step is to add a pattern. To do that, I'll simply click on the Add New Pattern button here. You'll notice the pattern is added to, the, uh, to this list here. You also notice this changed. You're now in a mode where I can identify each individual hole in the pattern. If I expand this, you notice I've got display and coordinate system. I can change the display to uh, you know, change the scaling, the percent of tolerance. I can include an origin, part coordinate axis, world coordinate axis. If you want, you can uh, change the coordinate system, flip the x-axis, flip the y-axis. Th these are different ways to customize how you're viewing the data and the coordinate system that are used. You want to make sure the coordinate system matches your uh, machining process. So you can do that using the properties for the pattern. I'll click on the pattern object here and that'll put you into a mode where I can identify where the whole information is in the table. You'll fill this information out and click on the add feature and it'll add that uh, feature object to the pattern. So you have to identify where the X and Y nominal cell locations are, the true position cell location, you can optionally put in a diameter plus no, uh, nominal plus and minus tolerance, as well as the x actual column, the y actual column, and optionally the diameter option, the diameter uh, actual column. So it's really pretty simple. You just click on the cell you want to fill in. In this case, I put in, I'm clicking on the x nominal. Then I'll click on the cell in the table which contains that information. You'll notice. It uh, identifies the cell location. Go to the Y, click on the Y nominal, go to the true position plus tolerance, click on the true position plus tolerance on the, in the table. Notice as I fill this information out, your X actual and Y actual column identification is, is added to it as well. Then if I want, I can add the diameter. So I'll click on this, slide over, click on the diameter nominal, and it'll fill out the plus and minus tolerance. Once you're done with this, you can identify whether it's an inner diameter or you can use linear tolerances if you want. And when you're done, you just click on Add Feature, and it'll add that feature to your pattern.
Since this data came from QC Calc Real Time, I know that it contains the nominal and plus tolerance information as well as the part data. In some instances where you, you may not be using QC Calc Real Time, you may use some other application to get the data, the nominal and plus tolerance information may not be included. In those instances, you can manually enter in the nominal and plus tolerance, the nominal and plus tolerance values, and then you'll just tell it where the, the columns are that contain the information, and then, then you can do it that way as well. Let's add the additional holes in this pattern. So I'll click on the X. Let's go to hole number two, which would be here. So I'll click on this. Now a shortcut to, uh, to speeding up this process. If, if you click on the X, hold the control key down, then I can just move to the Y nominal, then the plus tolerance cell, and then click on the nominal diameter, and it'll fill all that information in. I'm already at an inner diameter. This is an inner diameter. I'll click on Add Feature, and I'll just keep going to do the rest of the pattern. It's really pretty simple. It's just uh, point and click. So we've created pattern one, and that pattern contains six features. Let's add another pattern to this project. And instead of using the true position tolerancing zones to control the hole locations, we'll use the linear tolerancing zones. So I'm going to click on Add New Pattern. You notice down here it added a, a, a second pattern. And now we're in a mode to go ahead and add new features. I'm going to go through the same process as before. However, this time I'm going to check on the Use Linear Tolerance Zones. And now I'll just click on the X, click on the X nominal, Hold the control key down, click on the Y, and then click on the diameter, add new feature, go to the next one, and the next one, the next one. And finally, uh, hole number six. In this example, I've been including the diameter information, which is optional. What the bolt pattern analysis will do is it will figure out what the minimum maximum material condition is for the hole. And that minimum maximum material condition will be used in the in the calculation. So if I've got 15 parts, for example, and I'm looking at uh, the whole one true position, it'll go through all of the diameters of whole one, figure out what the minimum max material condition is, and that's the value it, it uses uh, for the for the calculations. To complete the data collector, we have to decide how many parts we want to use in the analysis, and do we want to keep the data file after it's been read and the and the uh, the bolt hole project has, has been built. If you click on the set number of parts button here, that'll bring up a window which will let you set how many parts to use. You can use all the available parts that are in the data file. You can ask the operator, which that's, that's what's set to now, or you can select a fixed number. 
if you select a fixed number and I put in 100 parts for example and you don't have 100 parts it's going to use as many parts as it can to reach that uh, reach that amount that you've you've chosen let's leave it to ask operator if I want to delete the uh, source file I'll just check the delete imported files checkbox here I'm going to leave that unchecked for now. If you want to make changes to either one of these patterns, maybe you want to change the name of the pattern or maybe change the name of the feature, you just simply click on the pattern and then you can change the name here or you can click on the feature, change the cell if you need to or change the data here, click on update and it'll update that the properties for that particular object. Well, our pattern is, our data collector is complete. So let's go ahead and play it. I'll exit this window. The data collector is done. I didn't lose anything. It's saved and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's in memory. If I hit the play button here, it'll actually play the data collector. Since the data file is identified, there's something to process. This is illuminated. I'll click on the play button. It'll ask us how many parts we want to use. Well, we only have two parts in the file, so I'll say OK. And it built our project. We have pattern one, which is using the true position tolerancing zone. And we have pattern two, which is using the linear tolerances. So our data collector did exactly what we wanted it to do. Once the data file has been read and the, the information extracted and the bullet hole pattern built, you really don't need the data file anymore. So you can set your data collector so that it actually deletes the data file. If you check delete imported files and play the data collector, It'll ask us if you want to clear the, the, uh, the project. You'll say yes. How many parts you want to use? Two. I'll say OK. And it'll build the project. Notice the play button is no longer illuminated. But that's because the data file was deleted. Let's pull up QC Calc Real Time and the training CMM and measure another part and watch what happens. Notice the play button is now illuminated. We can go ahead and, and hit the play button to run the data collector. Now we have three parts instead of two. I'll use all three. And you can see it's working. So you can also use this play button uh, as an indicator to let you know that, hey, you know, there is new data there and you can go ahead and play it. To get more information about the bolt pattern analysis software and to learn about other products provided by Becker Quality Solutions, visit www.beckerqualitysolutions.com.